tell me, have you ever heard the tale of Leonidas, the wolf of Whiterun? We have, but I suppose you're gonna tell me anyway. That I am. Not much is known of the man before he reached our shores, but we do know how he reached those shores. It was a stormy night off the coast of Dawnstar, the Sea of Ghosts. His vessel struck an iceberg and he sunk below the ice. But something inside the man saved him that night. Be it the gods or something darker. He was fished from the sea by an Argonian whose name has been lost to the tales. The fisherman surprised to find such a catch. Perhaps he sought the favor of the gods and helped this man back to life. When the wolf was healed, he found the nearest settlement, Dawnstar. Plagued by nightmares they were, dark thoughts and horrors plagued their dreams. With the help of a priest of Mara, a Dhamma, the wolf sought the source of these dreams, these nightmares. Some say it was a Daedra, others just the mead. But regardless, after the wolf had left, so too did the nightmares. I know, I know. That's when the dragons came. Pardon the intrusion. I heard speak of dragons. Why, that you did. I still remember the first in the sky. They say he can kill them. The wolf of Whiterun. You think it's true? There's bones to prove it. Both man and dragon. Yes. The Battle of Whiterun. Before Leonidas had earned his title as the Wolf, he was the one who returned from Helgen. Not word of dragons. Another madman, we all thought. Another adventurer selling tales of his journeys. But those in Balgras court, they heard the fear in the man's voice. And true, a dragon did come. The Jarl called for Irlith and her men. They set forth for the outskirts of the town, where folk had seen the dark wings. And he was there, wasn't he? Oi, that he was. Am I telling the story, or is it you? Fine. Go ahead. Yes, he was with them. Irelith and her forces have stood no match for the creature. It swept upon them with flame and fury. The tale has many variations now. The account of Irelith, the sole survivor, stated she saw the man, Leonidas, square off against the creature, one to one, on the top of the tower. But through the flames, the man burnt away and was replaced by a beast. A wolf. The wolf tore at the dragon and man alike. Irelith sounded the retreat, but it was too late for her folk. They fell to both the dragon and the wolf tearing the dragon's throat asunder. The wolf was the last left standing. The dark elf swore she saw the flesh of the dragon burn away, absorbed into that of Leonidas the wolf. The beast collapsed under its wounds, and she dragged the man back here, back to Whiterun. To the dungeons. But he was freed. Let go. Oi, that he was. A mistake if you ask me. Nobody's asking. Yes, he was released under order of Balgruf. Tale tells Irlith saw some hope in the man. Hope that perhaps she could control this beast. However, the Wolf of Whiterun left 
with a house call no less. Lydia, the quiet lass, although she wasn't always that way. Oi, why's he seen that? What happened to her? We'll get to that in time. I still remember the call of the mountain, the call of the Greybeards, Dovahkiin. They were calling him, this man, this wolf. They were summoning him to High Harothka. The legend of the Dragonborn is a tale for another time, but the wolf of Whiteron could do more than just howl. He had a voice. A shout that could part the clouds, spread fear into the hearts of men, and even breathe fire like the dragons who stalk our skies. Some say the man came here, came north, for a cure, something to set him free from the wolf blood. Aye, and I agree with them. The fates, however, had much more still in store for the wolf of Whiteron. He was earning the gaze of many Daedra. Ursian, Lord of the Hunt, stalked him in the night, eager for his new pup to submit to his will. There would be another that would aim to earn his servitude. Meridia, Prince of Life. There were many accounts of the wolf carrying her blade. Dawnbreaker is its name. A weapon that is the enemy of any necrotic horror or undead blight. There were others that followed him, weren't there? Aye, that there was. You mentioned one before. Lydia, the house Carl of Whiteron. Kajo, a Khajiit caravan guard. And a Nordic brawler, Benor. And most recall a dog trailing them. From all accounts, they were quite the team. The four did much to benefit Skyrim, to benefit our lives. However, times change. The wolf had been running from his master, and finally, that master caught up. Hercian, Lord of the Hunt. Yes. That's when she returned to us. Lydia. She was not the same, however. The fierce shield maiden was replaced with a timid, silent creature. Since the night of the Red Moon, the others were never seen again. No Kajo, no Benor, no Hound. Their stories, their tales, they ended that eve. But Lydia, Lydia returned to us in her broken way. This, I think, forced Irilif's hand. She spoke of what truly happened the day the dragon came. She spoke of the wolf who devoured her men. The wolf who killed the dragon. The wolf that was Leonidas. And so it was he earned the title, the Wolf of Whiterun. And the man became vilified by Balgraf and all who would listen I can't rightly blame them. I knew those men. Good men. Hard men. They deserved a better death than what they got. So you'd have them burnt by the dragon then? That's not what I'm saying. You're twisting my words. I twist nothing. You're interrupting my tale. The others might not have been seen again. But the wolf most certainly was. He re-emerged in the ranks of the Dawn Guard. Word traveled fast. The Wolf of Whiterun was recruiting. People were being snatched in the night, not by dragons, other fanged creatures. Oi, that they were. Word began to spread of four who now follow the wolf. A Khajiit who had self-imposed their own imprisonment in Riften. A thief from Falkreath. A bounty hunter covered in bones from Morthal, and a pale sorceress covered always by a hood. These were the agents of the Dawn Guard, 
and they sought to help us, free us from this encroaching vampire menace. They say his name was Harkon, lord of an ancient vampire family, not far from the throne of Skyrim, Castle Volkihar. Not all in the wolf's company had noble intentions. The bounty hunter, old and bone, betrayed him, sold him and his companions out to the Imperials. They sought the Wolf of Whiterun for more than one crime. First, desertion from his legion in Cyrodiil. Secondly, the lives taken in Whiterun. And thirdly, the murder of soldiers in Winterhold. But they were slaughtering people. That they were. I've heard the same tale. Yes, be that as it may, the Legion had its reasons. The bounty hunter stole away with the thief, and the wolf was left surrounded. One to one hundred. The Legion had their man surrounded. No way out. No option but surrender. However, surrender he did not. You could hear the thunder for miles around. The thunder of his voice. The voice of the Dovahkiin. The clouds parted and lightning struck down, killing one after the other. The wolf tore through them, limb from limb, with naught but his blade, and no armor. Load of nonsense, if you ask me. Again, no one is asking. What happened? He fought through them all, blade and arrow alike unable to pierce his skin, to pierce his scales. The crows would feast for days to come. And after that night, that bounty hunter was never seen again. The thief, however, was. So no doubt the bone one met a sticky end. The four were not seen again for a time. But stories emerged of great exploits deep under the earth. And that's all they are, just stories. Perhaps, maybe, we do know for a fact, however, that the wolf and the dawn guard marched upon Volkeha, and those who survived the battle had quite the tale to tell. Many did in taverns across the north. The vampire lord Harkin was defeated, the wolf and the dawn guard victorious. They saved us from peril. Saved us from disaster. Saved us from war. The dragons are still out there. Ah, that they are. But so too is the wolf. The dragonborn. So you believe it then? You believe you can kill the world eater? I don't know what to believe. I am a teller of tales and nothing more. But I do know this much. The wolf has had his chance to fade into obscurity, yet he has not. He and his followers still fight. I believe. Perhaps they fight for us, perhaps they fight for themselves. Nevertheless, they still fight. And there is more fighting to be done, not just against the dragons. There is a war coming. Brother against brother, sister against sister. The two will flow unto the other. There will be death. We have need of them yet. We don't need them. I have my axe and that's enough. Perhaps it is for you. But how many dragon's heads have you lopped off in your day? How many of your own brethren have you slain? Stick to the trees, Forrester. And I'll stick to my tails. So where is he now? The wolf? Hasn't been seen or spoken of since Volkeha. But there's been no word or celebration of the man's death. 
so I would hazard to say he's still out there, that his followers are still out there, and just what they do next might do more save us all. And that, my dear, still remains to be told.